Hello, everybody. I'm finally here. I overslept this morning. It was one of those weird things where you're having a dream, and I dreamt it's a common dream I have because I love doing um, home renovations. So I was having a dream that we bought a house, and I had to figure out how I was going to renovate it. And I wouldn't let myself wake up until I figured it out. And all of a sudden I realized, well, now look what time it is. And I had morning chores to do too. So I apologize for being a little late. Hello, Linda Price. How are you? And there's my sweet Susan. Hi, Diana. How are you, darling? And it is so good to see everybody. And look, my table's still a mess. I got down here. I didn't have time to do anything. It's just to hurry up and get on. And then didn't even have time to curl my hair. I took my shower this morning, and then I looked at my hair and decided it needed a haircut. So, Diana, don't look too close, sweetie. I kind of was in the mirror kind of doing. <laughs> and do you know what scissors I used to cut my hair? These. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, the chickens haven't been let out and fed again yet. So what we do is we have a huge a, a gravity feeder and an automatic water bowl filler. And so I go out there at least every other day and dump out their water so it refills fresh and then make top off their automatic feeder. But I'll let them go out. But anyway, so right now my hair is not in any way, it's not curled and tamed. It's just cut and dried and good enough. <laughs> it's a Corona haircut. <laughs> so Cher is here. Hello, sweetie. So you know what we're going to do? I had such a good time last week playing either or. And we did, remember, we did the mayonnaise or mustard. So I decided that was fun. Hi, Kathleen. And, and we haven't seen you in a bit. It's so good to see you. And how's your sister, hon? So anyway, a Corona cut. There we go. And, uh, oh, and Diana Wright, did you like the quilt? My daughter found that picture of that quilt. And did you like that I um, dedicated it to you? Because you have been the queen at the Charmin and the uh, uh, toilet tissues and all of that. So when I saw it, I said, I got to dedicate this to Diana Wright. But anyway, I've decided that we're going to have game times on uh good we're gonna have game times on tuesdays guess what next week we're gonna play quilt bingo so what i'm gonna do i was trying to think how can i get the quilt cards to you because i and i made up my own quilt bingo game which has not found its way back in the drawer yet but um i'll find it before then but i did i wrote up my own quilt game and I've decided what I'm going to do is give you a list of terms and have you make your own. Um, I'll put up like a basic card form on the site, give you the names and we're going to play quilt bingo. Now, normally if we play quilt bingo, everybody throws a fat quarter in the basket and whoever wins that round wins all the fat quarters. Well, we can't do that, so we're just going to play for fun. Now, today, hello, Vicki Robles. Today, we're going to do guess the meanings of the uh, an acronyms. Did I put an extra syllable in that? And um, and then quilting terms. So we're going to go through that. So anyway, and you know, I was going to leave it on my computer. Hmm. It's not going to work. I was going to bring it up on my computer so I wouldn't have to print out all the pages. But it's not going to work because then I can't see you and the answers and who gets the right answer. So what I'm going to do real quickly. Oops, I opened the wrong thing. Let me close this out. I'm going to open it back up and print it. 
And then once I print it, um, then I can have it on a stand. Oh, bye, Susan. Mwah. Take good care. You know what? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a bingo on a Sunday, too, because that would be a lot of fun. All right. Yeah, I hate that people miss the fun. So I'm going to print this out real quick. Let me make sure I do it back to front because it's 20 pages. <laughs> I put it in big writing so I could see it easily. And, um, okay. Let me see. Print on both sides. Okay. Here we go. So then I'll have to holler to Mark, throw me down the printed pages. <laughs> the printer's upstairs, so I'll give it a few minutes. But things like WISP, what does that stand for? Hmm. So I thought, hello, Diane57, yay! So, yeah, how are you feeling, sweetheart? You chopped off your hair last night. Aw, you went to beauty school? You have something in common with our Diana Wright. Aw, four finger lengths. Whoa, you love it. Good. I did about this much, and I just, it got on my nerves. And when it gets on my nerves, I'm lucky if I don't take a shave or two it, you know? <laughs> But if I didn't have such a big head, maybe I would take a shaver to it. But I need some hair. With this big head and big face I've got, I need cover. <laughs> so, oh, I'm glad he loved it, too. Oh, that is so cute. I love that little, I love the little icon or little emoji. That's great. So, yeah, because I figured it's going to be a while before I can get an official. I'll get Mark to trim the back up. But I figured I could, I even pulled out the sides, you know, and try to do my little layering. And then I kind of felt back there and went, hmm, it's thicker here than there. But I'll get Mark to touch up the back. He probably won't do the layers, but he at least can bring the bottom even. So, aha, you cover with scarves. I love it. I love it. So, anyway, hi, Teresa Djokovic. It is great. Let me go get my pages so we can start our game. And for people who just came in, Tuesdays are going to be game days. And next Tuesday, we're going to play Quilt Bingo, okay? But you'll have to give yourself the prizes because I can't get them to you. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me go call for Mark to get me the pages. Hold on a second, y'all. Y'all can look at my mess on my table. More money? Could I have pages off the printer? Yep. Oh, they're probably not done yet, huh? Oh, 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 I hate to bother you. Okay, he'll bring them down. It's taking a little longer because I printed on both sides of sides, so it, they have to flip. Okay, I gave you the clue of W I S P. What does that stand for? It stands for it stands for something I can relate to. It stands for works in slow progress, and that would be my kids' wedding quilts. <laughs> So, okay, let me see. I figured I'll take out my sewing stuff to get it ready. And, all right. Oh, and you know what? Oh, poo. I forgot to bring down 
I'll bring it Sunday. Diana Wright sent me a special package. It meant so much. It was like, oh my gosh, how fun. I love it when stuff just arrives on your door. Okay, let's see. All right, I think I got out everything I'm going to need for right now. Get my instructions on here. Oh, you know what? I thought a little later, if y'all want to see how I put my, put my fabric on the comic boards, I could show you that. That's my excuse. Yeah, that's why I left all that fabric out after Sundays. <laughs> that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to that. Oh, boy. French braid, it's French braid is beautiful, but it's not always that easy, is it? My I had two little girls, and somehow I thought that I needed to have them for them to have different hairstyles almost every day. And I let their hair go long and I would do braids, all kinds of braids in all different locations, wrapped up, braids braided together. <laughs> they had a um, wacky, I guess it was a Friday the 14th. So they said, let the kids in elementary school wear whatever wacky clothes because it's Friday the 13th. Turns out I took their hair and put a wire in their braids and made them stick out like this, like a Pippi long stocking, but in real life. It was so much fun. Okay. So, oh, are you watching me? I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. This is how, and you notice I do the ironing. Hi, Maureen. Colas, it's so good to see you. Boy, this is like old time week. I love it. All my people I've been missing. So, and then I take, so this is the fabric folded, and then I take and I put a large paper clip on it. And then I've got to, I'll put it back here for now. But I'll show you that again. Here is a full yard. Let me find my boards. Here are some of my boards. And I take my fabric like it's already fold, you know, here's how it comes off the bolt. Then I fold it up one more time. Because this way, if it's in the quarters like this, then it, it is pretty good height for the boards. The boards are about 11. Let me see. These boards, these are the mini comic boards. And this is 10 and a half inches tall by 7 inches wide. Okay? 7 by 10 and a half. And so when you fold a 44 inch wide fabric into fours, you get 11 inches. So it's a pretty good fit. And then that way they fit in the little, I went to the dollar store and got the mini clothes baskets and they fit perfectly. They all stand up like this in the mini clothes baskets. So, all right. My hair, I look at myself and my, like my hair looks different. But you know what? I can't always be, be all done up for you guys. <laughs> so, let's see. All of a sudden, I realized it's quarter to one. I better go. <laughs> now, you'll notice that I press it a lot, okay? And that is so that I minimize the size of it. Thank you, sweetheart. He just brought me all my, my um, pages. And I try to minimize the size of it so I get more in each basket. Oh, thank you. you. Diana, you're so sweet. And um, when I first moved here from Maryland, I had had the same hairdresser for 21 years. And I loved her. I loved her. And 
So all of a sudden, her name was Maureen, and all of a sudden, I ha moved down to North Carolina, and I didn't know where to go, what to do. I found one woman, and it was expensive, and I didn't like it. So for a couple of years, I cut my own hair, and Mark finally told me, and honey, it looks like it. You need to find somebody. <laughs> and, uh, oh, there you go. I love it. So then I put, I got a box of the big, very large paper clips. And now it's ready to go in the box. And see, this is over a yard. And see how it fits in such a nice small place? So that's that. Okay. Well, we're done with that for the moment. Because now... I have the quilt anachronisms. So, you, some of you might want to get a piece of paper and a pencil. Let me tell you why. Because if you're like me, you're a visual person. And so, when you spell something to me out loud, I'm like, huh? And I do better when I see it in person. So, let me... My camera is a little loose today, I noticed. Hold on just a second. Let me fix it. All right, hold on. Oh, who? There's this wrench, but trying to get... Okay, here we go. All right. All right. Let me see if that's a little bit better. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sewing again on, remember I'm doing my Urban Nine Patch, so I'm going to be sewing. I'll get all this stuff out so I'm ready to go. While I'm sewing, I'm going to be asking you crazy questions. And... If you don't want to play, that's okay, too. This is, you do what you want to do. This is your time, too. So what, um, but last week when we did the either or game, otherwise known as mayonnaise or mustard, it was so much fun. And I thought, what can we do today that's kind of fun and goofy, you know? Because there are so many quilt people out there right now doing lessons and videos and all of this. So there's plenty of places for you to go get that information. And I thought, we'll play games. We'll just play. You know, I'm big on play. So I will be sewing as I'm reading this stuff to you. And got all my stuff in place. But if you want a paper and pencil, go ahead and get it or pen. And that way, when I say the letters out, because first we're going to do the acronyms. I think I did add an extra syllable when I first said it. I think I said an and then now I can't say it. I'll just leave it the way it is. An, an acronym. I said an acronym. I said I did add an extra. Okay. I As I said. I haven't been awake that long. So, <laughs> yeah, big social distancing party. We're just having fun. We're just having fun. I'm just so honored that you're here. You could be anywhere, and I love the company, so thank you. All right. So, this is an easy one. Are you ready? This is an easy one. B-O-M. What is... B O M. What does that stand for? B O M. Oh, I got you. Blog of the month. Linda Price got our question right. Your prize is. Way to go, because I can't give you a prize. I can't squeeze it through the thing. But anyway, okay. What is B O? You know what? I don't want to do this one. <laughs> oh, I'm blushing. 
The next one was, what is B.O.B.? I'm going to leave it at that, ladies. I'm not saying anymore. It's not what you're, you with those little dirty minds, it's not what you think. I got to. <laughs> Oh, you know, what we did last week, Vicky, was, yes, block on board. I'd never heard of that. Last week, we, we did kind of vanilla or chocolate. Um, we just kind of went through all the different things to see, you know, are you this kind of person? Or are you that kind of person? And it was so much fun. And people came and joined in with their own ideas and all that. So, all right. What is DSM? Hi. Gosh, y'all, it's so good to see y'all. Okay, let me see. Oh, wow. Good, good names. DSM. I bet you somebody will get it. Bring your own booze. <laughs> y'all are so cute. DSM is how some people quilt and how I can't because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> yep, I have the big bubba gump thing of water. Just, just good old water. Last night, we did a little face-to-face -face chat and I made goulash, and that's my lunch today. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I love it. It's one of those comfort foods from childhood I just love. Mm. DSM is domestic sewing machine. Take care, Maureen. Now, what is the acronym FART? F-A-R-T. This is something I love doing. Especially when I go to Pineapple Fabrics. Oh, Linda Price gave up. It is. Oh, you can have a bite, share. Fabric acquisition road trip. Woo! <laughs> Do you ever eat too fast or swallow too fast and then you get your esophagus cramps up? I'm hoping mine won't do that because I just swallowed too fast. Okay. What is FMQ? Mm. Ah, the Mullins. Okay. Yeah, fart is fabric acquisition road trip. And FMQ. Oh, Linda. <laughs> Woo! This is good typing practice, isn't it? How about FQ? I bet you you know this one. FQ. You got it. Oh, yes. I love that. Oh, it's even better today. Fat quarters. Also, let, oh, yay. Where did I get that one? Whoops. I got to show you this quilt. My daughter sent me this photo in email. 
And is this a timely quilt or what? Let me see. Do you see it? It's toilet paper rolls. Isn't that the cutest thing? So I'm sure whoever made that quilt is having a great time with it right now. I think that is so cute. I wanted to show you that. Isn't that? I mean, it is just so cute. Okay. Then we got free motion quilting. Did anybody get that one? FMQ free motion quilting. It's the only kind of quilting I like. I, I don't like following lines. It scares me. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is funny. Hips. H-I-P-S. And oh, good job, Vicky. Good job. H I P S hips. I know we all have them, but I mean, this is <laughs> these are some of these are kind of silly things, but when you think of them, you kind of see yourself in them. So hips are hundreds of ideas piling up. Speaking of piling up. Oh, I'm sorry, Vicki. I'm sorry. Speaking of piling up, are, are any of y'all ladies that end up with these piles everywhere? It's like, you know, okay, I'll put this here because you don't know where else to put it. Or I'll put this here. I have a pile of stuff in every room. It's like, come on, Deb, get a grip. <laughs> Okay, now this is one that Angela Walters suffers from, F-O-B. If you've watched any of Angela Walters' free videos in the last two weeks, you can answer this question. Oh, good, good job. Um, Angela Walters talked about this. F-O-B. Let's see who's been watching Angela Walters' videos. I just love that gal. She's so cute. I saw you raise your hand, Diana. What did you, what did you raise your hand with? I wish y'all could just talk to me because it'd be a lot easier than typing, wouldn't it? Angela Walters suffers from this, but I actually like what this refers to. I'm weird. I'm weird. Oh, that is wonderful. Good gosh, Vicki. That is good gosh. Well, you know, um, I have piles, but they're orderly piles. The rest of the place is clean and neat. I just have to have a pile. In. Oh, it does sound like that. The FOB in this case is fear of binding. And Angela Walters hates doing the binding of a quilt. And she said she was going to have to work on getting herself to bind the quilt. Okay. Yeah. We'd all be talking at the same time. That's true. Okay. I know you're going to know this one. Let's see. I tell you what we'll do. If you know the answer, just type in anything. I mean, just hit a key so that you have reserved the right. Hit a key, enter, so that you have reserved the right to answer the question more relaxed. See? Okay. You ready? Because I know you're going to know this one. H S T and just hit any key enter and then I'll give you a chance to just answer it a little more relaxed. Hi Mariella. Yay, girlfriend. Ah uh, yeah, sometimes the notices are slow to come out. Okay, good. Diane 57 has the right. Oh, Mariella already typed it. That's good job. Good job. Okay. But Diana, Diane 57, 
got in first because I knew she knew it. Good job. Now, how about HP? I can tell you Akko likes it, but most of us don't do that much of it. HP. Sorry I'm eating lunch in front of you guys, but Mark warmed it up for me and I just ran down here. Good answer, Vicki. Okay, Diane57, what is HP? Akko likes it, but most people don't. I do it half the time. <laughs> I'm just trying to make it easier for y'all to answer without the stress of, I oh, can't type that fast. Hand pacing, Diane57, woo! Yay, way to go. All right. Somebody you, you go to for help. L-A-Q. What is L-A-Q? If you have a good one, take good care of her. L-A-Q. <laughs> That's right. Jenny, Jenny Byer does all her work by hand. Okay. What is L-A-Q? It's a person whose services you might use. And if you find a good one, take good care of her. Okay, Diane 57, she's ready. Oh, Linda Price, she zoomed right in there. <laughs> All right. All right. If you can type that fast, go for it, girlfriend. If Bonnie was here, oh, my God, she typed so fast. Good job, guys. Good job. Oh, don't feel dumb. In fact, just keep sewing. We're just goofing off and having fun. I figured with when you've got Ricky Timms on twice a week, Alex Anderson on three times a week, everybody in there was like, well, what can we do here that's a little different? We'll goof off and play. So, all right, whoops, okay. Here we go. LQS. LQS. Something we all need and need to remember to support, especially after all of this quarantining is done. Oh, I'm glad, Diane57. I love them, too. It's kind of nice to keep our brains kind of working because it's kind of a quiet time. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Good, Mariella. We just want us to have fun and smile. Raise our endorphins up. Feeling good about stuff. So, I listened to my Andrew, Andrew Cuomo, and so I've had my good, he's going to take care of us for the day, and now it's on to play fun and games. <laughs> Local quilt shop. Yes, very good. Yes, yeah, some of these uh, acronyms are really helpful and some are fun, but once this once this shut-in stuff is done, please support your local quilt shops. So, oh, there you go, Vicki Robles. I'm not sure if mine has a full enough. I'll have to check, see if they have a full enough website where you can really order stuff. Okay. Um, this one's a cute one. PhD. And it's not what you think. It's not something you had to get at a college. In fact, you know what it is? It's my most common thing in, found in my quilt room. Yep, I'm guilty of this big time. Yes, I heard about his brother being sick. Gosh. Yep, I think somebody needs to say why as a country... We're supposed to be this great country. Why do we have a worse problem here than anywhere? 
Why? So. <laughs> PhD. <laughs> You're so cute, Vicky. And when y'all give, projects half done. The story of my life. <laughs> projects half done. That is truly the story of my life. So, okay. Ah, uh, this one you'll remember if you've been quilting for any P, I guess so. If you've been quilting for any length of time, it's a good thing I don't believe in him then, because otherwise I'd be scared. <laughs> um, pigs, P-I-G-S. If you've been quilting any length of time, you know what this is. Ah, good for you. Anybody remember what pigs are? Oh, good job, Vicky. Yeah, and feel free to chat and all of this. Tell us what you're working on. I love that. I'm just giving something to do if you enjoy doing it. If not, just chat amongst yourselves. You're not, if this is all loosey goosey, do what's fine. Okay. Oops. I always pin this end wrong. And then when it goes, it's time to sew it, the pen jabs me. So. Remember those 60s and 70s? Yep. Do you remember pigs? Pigs is projects and grocery sacks. Before they started doing the big UFOs, they had these pigs, which you would bring your projects that you needed to finish and you needed some incentive to finish. You'd bring them in a brown grocery sack and then you would compete to see who actually got things done. All right. Now, how about, oh, this is, this is a funny one. This is what I came to realize about a year ago. Yep. Good job, Diana. Um, Sable. S-A-B-L-E. Sable. And once I turned 63, I started thinking about this. And wanted to avoid my kids carrying out bundles of this stuff to the trash. <laughs> if that gives you any good hints. On these hard ones, I'll give you a few hints. Uh, okay. So she got close enough. And uh, so here we go. Let me see. Stash accumulation beyond life expectancy. There you go. Okay. Uh-oh, here's a good one. S-E-X. And I'll give you a hint. It kind of follows last, the last clue. One word does. <laughs> I'll get I'll tell you this one. Stash enhancing excursion. They really push that one because excursion starts with an E. Here's a cute one. Look at this last one. 
stash. Special treasures all secretly hidden. Okay. We only have a few more of these and then we'll do easy ones. Okay. All right, and this one, <laughs> and this one, <laughs> TGIF, it has nothing to do with Friday, TGIF, nothing to do with Friday, or the restaurant. <laughs> and what TGIF is, thank God it's finished. Oh, we've all said that. <laughs> we that's what I'll say once I've done with all of these dumb curved pieces. All right, this should be pretty easy. Yep, good job, Vicky. This should be pretty easy. T O T, and it refers to a uh, a type of fabric. I guess you would kind of say a color or pattern of fabric. T O T, and it's usually. Well, I can't, I can't say. I was going to give you a clue that pretty much told you the whole thing. But it often comes in white. Okay, there's a good clue. T-O-T. -T, often comes in white. All right. Vicki Robles. Oh, look at Linda. And Kathleen Kendall and Vi oh my gosh oh yeah let me show you Mariella Barnes let me show you what I'm working on it is a gorgeous gorgeous quilt if I can make it as good as the teacher it's this pattern it's called Urban Nine Patch and it's it's just a lot of, it's a lot of curves, but let me show you a little bit about it. It's by So Wonderful Quilts, and here is our, I'm sorry, So Kind of Wonderful. So Kind of Wonderful, okay, and... It is called Urban Nine Patch. Urban Nine Patch. And I like it because it's one of these patterns that you can buy and print it right out. But this is the, the photo that made me want to take the class. I thought that was gorgeous. So here is mine. Here's what I put together so far. And it, I'm really going to like this. And it's done with mostly Jenny Beyer fabrics because, you know, she's my gal. And this color I got from, um, I bought it, this from Pineapple Fabrics one of the last times I went. But I think it's really, really pretty. So, yes, there are lots of curves. Let me show you. You do this curve, this and this, times four. So that's 12 curves per block to be sewn. And, but, whoops, I put the papers away before I was ready. I want to show you the ways that it's really an easy quilt to make. You make a nine patch with the outsides a little longer 
Then you take this wonderful Easy Curves ruler. And, you know, normally I don't like spending a lot of money on rulers, but this was worth it. The Quick Curve ruler. And it has a slot, and you run your 45-millimeter rotary cutter right through the slot. Isn't that wonderful? So no drawing lines and then having to cut it. You do it all at once. And... So when you use that ruler, you can get that curve cut. And then you end up with a piece like this. And I have a bunch of these already cut. See how nicely it cuts them? And then you take... And do, do me a favor, ladies. When you buy a ruler, write your name on them right away. Especially if you're taking a class. Everybody in that class has that ruler. And the one thing you don't want is having to argue of whose ruler is what. But what I'm doing right now is making these little sections to then sew on to the nine patch. And I'm hoping to set mine on point and use that curve ruler to do a scalloped border. I think the scalloped border would be great. All right. Here we go. Oh, nice seeing you, Linda. Take good care, sweetheart. So, okay. Um, here's another one kind of related to the last clue, W-O-W. W-O-W. What does that stand for? Kind of related to the last one. It was so good to see Linda. Thank you, hon, for coming. This is always the tricky part when you're doing curved seams. You put the piece down like a smile, and then this one is a frown that goes right on, and then you match the frown side to the smile side. It's always a little tricky when you're starting it out. Okay. I don't know what went wrong. Oh, hello. Hello. Nina Fay <laughs> said Vetus Nina Fay. Uh, Bologna, Bologna from Norway. Hello. I remember seeing you. Welcome back. How are things in Norway? I hope y'all are doing a good job with your virus fighting. Okay, now, did I do this one? Um, oh, W-O-W -W was white on white. And then, now this is an important one. You have to know this no matter what. And I know you'll get it. What is W-O-F? What does that stand for? And you'll see that in patterns all the time. So that's an important one for you to know. With the fabric. Woohoo! Good job, Mariella and Vicki Robles. She got half of it. Diana put her thing in and got it perfectly right. Oh, wow. Wow. You're mostly, yep, we're inside too. We're inside too. But she said, wow. <laughs> okay, and I got a funny one. It's Wombat. Now, what in the world could Wombat stand for? I'll show you. I thought this was cute. A Wombat is a waste of money batting 
and time. <laughs> Waste of money, batting, and time. Okay. All right. Now I've got a question for you. What does G's Bend, G-E-E, G's Bend, mean in quilting? Anybody know what G's Bend is? Good job. Good job, Diana Wright. That was sweet. Okay. What does G's Bend mean in quilting? I wouldn't have gotten Wombat either. That was a little bit of a stretch, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. Wait till Sunday. I've got pictures of Diana Wright's latest customer quilt or custom quilt. Oh, my gosh. The quilting is gorgeous. So, Sunday, make sure you tune in. To see her latest. See now, Diana, I use you. I use you as my hook. That's pretty cool. She's disqualified. Uh oh, I. Yeah, very good. Yes, what it is is G's Bend stands for African American quilts that they didn't have access to patterns and things like other people did. And so they just took and made it up on their own. And it's amazing. The G's Bend is, um, they, many of these brilliant quilts fam came from quilt makers who lived in G's Bend, Alam Alabama. So, okay. Now, what, what does, well, this is a tricky one. How do I, all right, I know what, I'm going to read you the description. You give me the answer. These are quilts made by or in the style of a certain quilter and quilters in Pennsylvania, Indiana, or Ohio. Geometric patterns and central medallion square in square with wide borders is a popular design design in this um, in this community. Oh yeah, don't ever worry, Mariella. None of us mean any harm. If we say something, you know that we're just teasing, sweetie. We're so happy you're here. Yeah, and Vicki Robles wouldn't hurt anybody's feelings. Mariella, all right, Amish, very good. That's how I'm going to do this now. Okay, here we go. This will be a lot of fun. Applique. Oh, well, I just blew it. <laughs> um, the quiz for that one was a piece of fabric sewn on top of a background piece of fabric, usually in fun shapes or decorative designs. I blew it. I said the answer. <laughs> okay. All right, what kind of quilt was this one? Um, I use I use the um, Sharpie. I use the Sharpie because you have to have something, some kind of, you know, it's a permanent, and you have to write it back on from time to time. But, um, okay, using both traditional and modern, modern quilting techniques, this kind of quilt generally combines piecework, applique, embroidery, and more. And they, they don't use the traditional methods that a traditional quilt quilter would use. What kind of, and these quilts can contain just about anything. There's no limit. You know what kind of quilt that is? Not pretty close. Um, I guess I was just think of paint using paint and yarns and fibers and who knows, maybe even aluminum foil. What form of quilting? It's what it's my favorite. It's who I am. 
Who? What kind of quilting is my favorite? Yeah, a landscape quilt is a part of that. It's a part of that genre. And if you don't know, I'll tell you. Because I probably did a bad job reading it. It's art quilts. Yay! All right. I will now, this one, you'll like this one. Sewing blocks or sections of blocks efficiently and quickly in assembly line fashion. Completing each unit in sequence. And the first time I ever saw it, Eleanor Burns was d doing it. She, in fact, her, she and her sons used to go to a uh, clothing factory when they had put out a lot of their fabric scraps. Now, do you know what is the method of sewing blocks or sections of blocks in, in a sequence, in, in efficiently and quickly, okay? What do you call that? But she noticed the way that the pants were being sewn, like the waistbands and the pockets and stuff, and she said, aha, this is, uh-oh, I did this curve wrong. I put the, the like sides together. See that? Now it's, now it's a mouth. <laughs> so assembly line sewing, Diane57, you are you are sharp, girlfriend. Okay, let me see if I did any of these others wrong. We, you know it's right if it looks like this. Because then once you push it out, you see, you know it's right. But this one, no, I think it could be a mountain. Okay. An optical illusion quilt pattern that makes it appear is that you're looking at each quilt block through a a fish that's what it is what is a kind uh, a pattern that it's optical illusion oh i did both two of them that way i love it okay i've got then i've got here we go oh i love it <laughs> you know what i wasn't thinking and so if you're putting pieces together, you want them, you think you want them to go the same way, but to do a good curved piece, you have to go opposite. So it's an optical illusion, which makes you think you're looking through something. I, I hate to, if I, if I say it too much, it, it'll actually give away. It's not a bar jello, but that's a, that, that also is an optical illusion quilt. But this one where each block you feel like you're looking through part of a uh, something. Oh, I don't know, Diana Wright. Please tell us. I love learning. Oh, y'all are so sweet. I thank you, Vicky. Guys, you're so sweet. Okay, if anybody doesn't, if anybody doesn't, it's attic window quilt. I thought, how do I say this without giving away the answer? Because they said that it makes you feel like you're looking out a window. Well, duh, that's part of the answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, this is a good one. A quilt containing signatures from friends or others, often for celebrating an important life event. That's a good guess, though, Diana Wright. Um Sometimes they're referred to as a memory quilt. What is the name of that kind of quilt? Where people sign it, usually in the center of a block. The blocks are made so that you can see the signatures really good. What is that named? Good job. Um, and they, like, often they'll give these as like to thank a... Um, a president of the guild. Anybody know? It's it's what you would use. You would want to get from a movie star. You'd want, and people used to keep them in little books. Am I giving you enough clues? Yeah, y'all are all around it. I'm going to say you're all right. An autograph quilt. Good job. Good job. Okay, now I know this one because I used to live in Maryland. 
It's a kind of quilt. It originated from Baltimore, Maryland in the 1800s. It was made, um, uh, made, this quilt is made from an elaborate bunch of applique blocks with symbolic designs. And they're also referred to as a sampler or a friendship quilt. What is the name of this kind of quilt? It's named after a city in Maryland. And I, earlier, somebody said this word. It originated in Maryland in the 1800s. And they, they have blocks with beautiful applique work that usually show pictures, scenes. Yep, that's the first word. Mariella Barnes got the first word. And you know, the hardest thing is people net call these. I'll go ahead and say she got it. Baltimore album quilt. Okay. All right. Now I have an easy question. Something to give your, yeah, good job, Mariella. Baltimore album quilt. Um, here's an easier question so your brains don't overheat. <laughs> What is the, it's not the front of a quilt, it's not the batting, but it's the other piece that makes up the quilt sandwich. And this is where your label will go. What is that called? Good job, Vicki Robles. But what is it called? It's not the front, the top, it's not the batting, and it's where the label should go. This is a simpler one, so you don't get overwhelmed. Well, that's a good question, but it's not the batting. But I love how you use wadding. Oh, there we go. Diane 57 got it. Backing, and yep, put them in the corner. Good job. Okay. Now, this is for somebody who already wrote this answer just recently. A type of quilt that creates movement by how the strips of fabric squares are sewn. Usually of the same color going from light to dark and it creates movement. Now somebody just got through writing this down for a different clue. And... Oh my gosh, look at y'all. Did y'all know that it came, where Bargello came from is Bargello, Spain. I remember reading this. I, I did a little presentation of this. And they had a courthouse that had a chair in it that had a seat cushion done from needlework in that pattern. So it got its name because nobody knew what it was. And it is Bargello. And so it came from a government building in Bargello, Spain. How about that? Okay. Or was it Bargello, Italy? Now I forgot. Oh, poop. All right. Long temporary stitches used to hold layers together until the final quilting is done or the final sewing is done. Oh, sorry, sweetie. Y'all are a bunch of smarties. Y'all are great. Long, loop. oh, look at y'all. Darn it, y'all are good. Okay, now this one's a fun one. Fabrics made by covering, covering an area of the fabric with wax to prevent the dye from penetrating into that area. Hot water is used to remove the wax and they usually have a high thread count. What kind of fabric are we referring to? And a lot of them are made in Bali. And I love them for landscape quilting. Yes! Woohoo! You were off. I'm sorry you were off, Vicki. That makes it hard for you to compete. I'm sorry. We'll give you an honorary winner status. There you go. Okay, now, 
Mariella, got this one for you, darling. A middle layer of a quilt between the quilt top and the back that provides warmth to the quilt and depth. Top types of these are cotton, polyester, and wool. What is that? Oh, it's Ocean Pas the OP Factory. I didn't know that. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry you had to write all that. I saw Ocean Pacific and I didn't know what it meant. That's so cool. Oh, I'm sorry, Diana. Well, if it makes you too frustrated, we don't have to play. Maybe what I should do. Hmm. Yep, batting or wadding. Very good. Diana 57, Mariella Barnes. That's wonderful. Okay. What do you call it? You don't, it doesn't, ah, uh, that's it. It doesn't, okay, this is a term for something that doesn't happen as much as it used to because the battings are a higher quality. But it was a process, something bad that would happen when the batting fibers would migrate through the quilt top. What is that process? What is that process called? Did I just sew this wrong again? I might have just sewn this wrong. Again. Now see, this is the real Deb. She makes mistakes left and right. Bearding, way to go. Way to go. Okay. I think, yep, I did it again. I made another fish. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now, this is a neat one. These are, when I did a hand piecing demonstration a couple weeks ago, I used this kind of needle. They're usually very short needles that are used for hand piecing or mostly known for using for quilting. What, what is, what are these needles called? And the higher the number, the smaller the needle. So a 12 would be the tiniest, tiniest. The nine or 10 would be bigger. What is the name of that kind of needle? No, nope, not a straw needle, but pretty close. This one is mainly known for quilting. So when Jenny Beyer does her hand quilting, John James, that's the maker that she's the most pop or happy with. Do you know the exact name for the needle? It's been a name for needles for probably 100 or more years, 200 years. Yes, Diana Wright, got it. It's betweens. Isn't that in interesting? Betweens is the name of quilting needles. And so let me see if I have a pack here I can show you. Y'all are learning a bunch of stuff today. Sharps, okay, here's a Milner's needle. They're longer. Straw needles are similar to a Milner's needle, except they're thin enough that they kind of bend and flex a little bit. All right. Oh, that's that's tiny. Then here's sharps. Sharps are best for regular all around sewing. General sewing. Okay. And I love John James. Okay, here they are. Here's a good package that mentions it. Gold eye quilting betweens. Now, I don't know why it's betweens. This is a size 10. So let me show you my finger next to the needle so you can see they're very small. But these are betweens are what people mostly use for quilting. John James, but really they're betweens. And these are size 9. So these are actually, these are larger. In fact, let me see. I'll show you the difference between a 9 and 
a 12. See the difference between 9 over here and 12 over here. Now, I don't use 12s. That's why I still have this package. Um, I, I use 10s or 11s, but I've not been able to get down to a 12. So that is too tiny for a Deb. All right. Let me put that away. But I love the Golden Glide. I love the, um, the large eye or the gold eye. Something that makes it easier to see. Oh, I bet you it is something like that, huh? Well, Mary Ella Barnes, I, I admire you for using a 12 in any kind of needle. That's amazing. Okay. All right. I got a good one for you. This one's not too hard. And it's always good to know because it affects how hard or easy it is to sew a block. You know in fabric you have the straight of grain, the length of grain, and the width of grain. What is it called when it's right in the middle? So pretend this is your fabric. You've got the length of grain. You've got the width of grain. What is it called, though, when it's a diagonal? Okay, and you have to be, oh, man, y'all are good, good job, and you've got to be careful because the bias stretches like mad, good job, guys, when I have to work with a bias, I starch the fabric, and then I don't use steam, I use a dry iron only, because you've got to keep that bias from stretching, do you know a fabric, it, you can get a half of an inch of stretch, in a 10-inch piece of fabric if you pull on the bias. That's a lot of stretch. Okay. And that's why certain swishy skirts are cut on the bias because then they give that beautiful swirl. All right. Now, let me get... Y'all are doing good. They had a clue on here that says bark cloth. I've never heard of bark cloth. But bark cloth a type of densely woven cotton fabric, which is made from the fibers of tree bark found in tropical places. I didn't know there was such a thing. I probably heard of it, but I had no idea it really came from tree bark. Goodness gracious. Okay. All right. This, what's the name Oh, what is the name of, oh, what is this piece? Wait a minute. No wonder I'm using a weird piece. What is this? I don't know what this is, but I'm moving it out of the way here. Okay, I'm getting more and more confused. All right, what is a strip of fabric? that is sewn over the edges of the quilt after the quilt has been quilted. And when you answer this one, tell me what width of strip you like to use for this. Don't ask Angela Walters because she doesn't like to do it. <laughs> Okay, I put my smile, then I put my frown. Okay. Ah, brother, I don't like having to re-stitch. Binding in two and a half inches, okay? I'm a two and a half inch girl too. What is? What do y'all like to do for your binding? What width do you use? They say anything is fine between two and two and a half. But what what is your favorite? Two and a half. Yeah, because you know what? Oh, I'm sorry, Vicki. We're, we're glad you came back, darling. We're very glad you came back. I do not understand how, oh my gosh, you can really do that. Oh, I can't even do two and a quarter. But, honey, have y'all seen the size of these hands? 
I mean, these are man-sized hands, and, and even my wrist. I'm a big bone girl. I'm a big girl, but I'm a big bone girl, too. And I can't do, I can't handle that anything less than two and a half. I'll feel like I'm just all thumbs. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, Mariella. Okay. All right. I've got another clue. This is a little bit tricky, but not too bad. A type of invisible stitching often used for sewing applique, binding by hand, but it also can be done on a sewing machine with a certain type of stitch. And what is it called? It's often used for hems. Ah, uh, yeah, I got big old hands. Yep. But it also can be used for hems. What's the name of the stitch that you purposely do so you can't see? Now, so you can't see it. And yeah, I call it Diana Wright. I call mine whip stitches too. But the name they're looking for refers to you can't see it. Did you get that little clue? If you can't see it, ah, uh, I think they did. They say John Wayne had small feet too. <laughs> we have. It's funny. We all have different. There, Mariella Barnes got it. Mariella Barnes got it. The key was you, you try to make it so you can't see it. And if you can't see, you are blind. It's a blind stitch. So, very good. Okay. All right. This is an easy one. Are you ready? Ah, Diana Wright would know that answer. Good job. Wow. Wow. I had the same size feet as John Wayne, and he was this big old guy. Wow. Okay. Um, this one is, it's, oh, no. It is a part of traditional quilting, a unit, I guess you would kind of say a unit of measure. It has different uh, mis miscellaneous number of pieces. And it goes into a quilt. What is it called? It's repeated and put together and it makes the quilt top. What is it called? I mean, this is super simple. Some of them are called nine patches or four patches or rail fence. What am I? Close, but I'm looking for this. This what is one of these things that you put into a quilt called? The nine patches or their four patches? They could be all different. You know, they can have different numbers. This is really, really, really simple. Like the basic, basic thing. A quilt, traditional. Hi, Nadine. Block. Nadine got it. I was looking for the word block. Excellent. Okay, what am I, when a lot of quilt shops do this, and you have to come back every four weeks, and they give you a new pattern. So you do a quilt every four weeks, you come back and they give you another part of the pattern. What is that called? Quilt shops do it. Whether it's online or in person. Every four weeks you go get another part. Another part of the pattern. What is it called? Every four weeks you get another piece of the pattern. Block of the month. Diana Wright got his voice. She was just she was typing everything. <laughs> Great job, honey. You got it. Okay. 
Here's another one. Might seem simple, but... All right. A strip of fabric that serves to frame the quilt and is sewn to the outside area of the quilt, but inside the binding. What am I? I'm sewn to the outside of the center of the quilt, but I'm inside the binding. And it fra I frame the quilt. What is that? I, I, you know, I don't think I've ever done a ladder stitch, Vicki. That's cool. But what? Uh, almost sashing, but big up oh, there. Nadine got it. It's the border. Good job. You're kind of all right in a way, but this frame, when you do the framing of the quilt, I think that's what gave the border away. Okay. Y'all are doing very good. Turn this over. Oh, okay. I've talked to y'all about this before on one of the shows. What am I? I'm a type of applique. In which separate motifs are cut out from a printed fabric background. And then applied to a different background. Remember how I told y'all about chintz fabric was really expensive. And so they would buy one yard of a beautiful printed chintz. And they would cut out an entire motif. Whether it was a flower or a peacock or bird. And then they would take that. And hand embroider it onto a background. Uh, not fussy cut, but it's close. It's close. It's, it was named for... Yes! Mariella got it! It's, and that, type, that name stands for Persian Embroidery. Good job, Embroidery Purse. Good job, guys. All right. Good one. That was a that was a tough one. So I'm very proud. Good. Y'all were all on the right track, and it definitely is fussy cutting. That's for sure. Okay. All right. You ready for this? This name has changed over the years. Women used to use this kind of fabric in the 1800s to make their gowns out of, but now it means. Now it means. A medium weight cotton fabric, which is printed with a small repeated design, usually little flowers or leaves. And it, the fabric is named that because it came from India, a town in India. And back when I first started, not quite feed sack, but that's a very good guess. That um, when I first started quilting, that's about all we had in quilt stores. And Nadine, some of the fabric that Edita Sitar uses. Yes, Diane 57 got it. It's, it. That name comes from where it was made first, Calicut, India. Very good. Woo okay, now here we go. You can do this one, guys. This refers to a type of quilting technique. It could be a block name too. An advanced traditional quilt pattern where folding. Yeah, it's it, it kind of come. Yeah, it, it, it's not really linen because linen's made from a flax plant. But it's, yeah, people kind of refer to it that way, Nadine. So good, good job on that. Um, but linen's made from a flax plant. And, but calico is kind of a, a term that means all cotton, so it kind of has gotten thrown in there. All right, so go back to this name of this pattern. Uh, we're doing game day. Next week, Nadine, we're going to do quilt bingo. Um, okay. This, this technique, it's an advanced traditional quilt pattern where folding and stitching is used to create a three-dimensional look in quilt blocks. Oh, I'm sorry, Vicky. Oh, I'm sorry. That's frustrating. Everybody's on their computer now that they're shut into the house. Okay. These particular blocks are intricate and add a touch of elegance to your quilt. Now, you're, you sew these block pieces together, but part of it you fold back 
and stitch to back. Anybody have a clue what this kind of block or technique is called? I know one thing, Missouri Star Quilt Company tried to do an easy version, and it ended up heavy as you all get out because it uses so many layers of fabric. Can anybody... Let's say this. Oh, Mariella got it. Cathedral window. Yay, yay, yay. Good job. I started to say, if you think about it when you go to church on Sunday. <laughs> All right. Now, somebody has tried throwing this term out so far. Okay, you ready? I bet you, I, I don't know, Diana probably would know that answer, Nadine. So, okay, you ready? Somebody has said this answer before. A type of scrappy quilt made with a lot of small patches and all different kinds of fabric. Some are, um, they're generally one patch design. Many quilters trade fabric scraps with each other in order to collect a variety of fabric for their what kind of quilt. This might be a little tough. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and give you that because they wanted either that or um, charm quilt. So good job. Good job. Okay. Are you ready for this one? We call them a different name now, but they used to be called the name I'm looking for because it's fabric that's printed that kind of looks like a traditionally um, oh, I got I got them from the internet, Nadine. Good job, because yeah, I look I like looking up all kinds of games you can play with guilds. Oh yeah, I bet you she did that. That's from the Missouri Quilt Comp Missouri Star Quilt Company, and it was heavy as heck. My daughter has it now. Okay, a fabric printed that looks like a traditionally piece top. But there's no piecing involved. You just quilt it as it is. What is that called? And I'm looking for the more older fashion name. Cheater quilt. Diane 57. Got it. Good job. That was exactly what it was. They used to call them cheater quilts. Now they kind of call them panels. <laughs> okay. Um, the first ever thought I had of doing a quilt was a cheater quilt and I didn't realize that that took all the fun out of it <laughs> all right here we go Diana Wright good job Diana here's one for Diana Wright it's a quilting technique with symmetry and curves that overlap and remind you of fish scales you can create this design by tracing a glass or a cup what am I called? What am I? It's a quilting pattern. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> and that's why I've had to take out two or three of these. <laughs> and I've only made six, maybe. <laughs> Oh, yay. Good job. Okay. So now what am I? It's a quilting pattern that has curves. It almost, almost pumpkin seed or orange peel. It looks like it's close. There, Diane 57 got it. Very close, guys. That clamshell was what they were looking for. And, you know, some of y'all's answers are technically right, but I'm just going by what they've got. Okay. All right, here we go. Y'all can do this. A circle of primary, secondary, and tertiary, complementary, and analogous colors that help quilters explore color theory and fabric selection. What am I? 
Yay, Mariella Barnes, Nadine. Woohoo! Yay, good job, guys. Okay. Oh, y'all did great on that one. All right, this one is a little tricky. Think about it before you answer. What am I? I'm a half of a triangle, half of a half square triangle. I'm usually sewn on to square up a quilt top made from blocks that are joined at diagonal rows. And I finish, I make, I make an on-point quilt into a rectangle. Oh, that's terrible, Vicky. But you know, the good thing is, is hopefully some people are learning. Yes, Nadine got it. Corner triangle or setting triangle. Very good. Oh, good job. Okay, and remember guys, she's having to translate from German to English. This is amazing, but you're all doing so good. Okay. Up uh, here we go. It's kind of been answered before, but I'll just do it again. A type of irregular quilt consisting of odd shapes that are randomly placed. Silk and velvet are popular fabrics used as well as embellishments like embroidery or beading. What beading? What am I? Yay, Diane sewing. Good job. Yeah, don't you y'all do what you want because this is your Tuesday. Okay. Uh, that's true. Long fingernails get in the way. Ah, Nadine, we love you. Okay, so what kind of quilt was, was made with silks and velvets and stitches and beading and was made during the Victorian times when they loved way too much stuff? They, they loved embellishment. What is that? And they're kind of dime of dozen because nobody ever used them and wore them out. What kind of quilt am I? Yes, I am, Mariella. Crazy quilts. Woohoo! You are right. I wish this were Jeopardy. Y'all be winning lots of money. Okay, Diana. Diana, this one's for you, girl. It's a type of quilting. Diana does this beautifully. I don't do it that beautifully but it's a type of quilting where you quilt parallel lines, vertical and horizontal lines, and you form a grid of squares or diamonds. What am I called? Type of long arm quilting where you quilt in parallel lines, vertical and horizontal, and forming a grid of squares or diamonds. What am I? And they're looking for the specific little word. But I think, I know Diana Wright does this. Yes, I knew. And Diane57, you got in there too. Great job. Okay. I am something that hangs on a wall, a vertical surface covered with batting or felt, and used by quilters to lay out their blocks and figure out their designs before they stitch them together. What am I? Y'all did really good on that last one. I thought that was a little bit hard, but y'all did really good. Design wall. Woohoo! Mariella, Nadine, Diane 57. Great. Okay. Here's a modern question. What am I? It's I'm a process of cutting layers of fabric by rolling it through this machine that has sharp edges that cuts the different shapes, which is it saves time rather than rotary cutting. What kind of process am I or machine am I? Good job. 
Good job. Yep. Any kind of the die cutting machines. Okay. Now this is a fun pattern. They didn't used to have this. A beginner's quilt, which is made by cutting up a nine patch into four quarters and putting them back together in different designs. You have many layout options in this type of quilt pattern. You take a nine patch and you cut it into four pieces and then put it back together after turning it around or whatever and it makes all new patterns and what is this called it's all the rage these last couple years and you could say that it makes the original nine patch yep y'all got it good job it's the disappearing nine patch but hidden nine patch is that works too. Good job, guys. Yoo-hoo! Bonnie's here. Yay, Bonnie! We're, we've decided that Tuesdays are for game playing, and we're going to do bingo next week. Okay. A name of a quilting pattern. It's considered one of the hardest patterns to do. And I personally, it was very popular in the 1930s. And I personally like the John Flynn method of doing it. But what is the name of, and certain very special family occasions, it, it is the perfect quilt as a gift for certain family occasions, like for a couple. Oh. <laughs> oh, Bonnie, it's so good seeing you. Thanks for coming in and getting the... Yes, Nadine, double wedding ring quilt. And that's what I'm making all my kids, and I've only gotten one finished. But I'm going to finish those other two. I promise. I promise. <laughs> all right. This one, you could say, kind of came from close to Nadine's area of the world. Closer, closer to Nadine than our. And it is an applique quilt. Thank you, sweetheart. An applique quilt with petal shapes radi radiating out from a center circle. It was popular in the 20s and 30s. And what is the name of this? An applique quilt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, Nadine, Dresden. See, I figured she's closer to that area of the world than we are. So it is a Dresden plate. Boy, Nadine, you have been doing your studying, girlfriend. You are definitely a student of quilt history. All right. Now, this is a funny, a classic quilt pattern that I never made one because it has curved piecing and I was a little worried about the curved piecing. And it consists of a quarter circle set inside a square. And it was also used during the prohibition. Anybody have an idea? And it has curved piecing, and prohibition is a good clue. Think of somebody walking home that maybe think, ah, there we go, Drunkard's Path. Woohoo! Oh, Dresden's a beautiful city. Ah, oh, that is so wonderful. Okay. The process, okay, what am I? I'm learning to love it, Marielle, especially if I can, uh-oh, I think I just got ready. No, wait a minute. Oops, I think I was ready to sew this on wrong. Oh, my goodness. Let 
Let me see if I did this. I'm going to pull off one of these and see. Okay. A pr this is a process of easing, maneuvering, and easing in fabric when, like, one side... One side, I think I just said the thing. But you're trying to put two fabrics together and one's a little bit bigger than the other. What am I? And I think I might have said the word. So if you heard me well, then you got a little uh, jump on people. Yep, I was getting ready to sew this wrong. Ease, exactly, easing in. Good job. Okay, here's another quilting one. For this one, visualize Angela Walters. Okay, that's my clue. Visualize Angela Walters. It's a type of free motion quilting which is done by stitching a line a uniform distance away from the first line. Or a, unif uh, a, a uniform line away from the edge of an applique shape. Um, easing just means it's like carefully holding fabric and sewing it slowly so you don't get puckers. You just kind of kind of smoothing it out as you go. Echoing, good job. Echo quilting. Okay. Now this one I know you can do. What is the most popular type of design software that quilters use to design quilts? Good job, Diana Wright. And I know if I know Diana, she's having to stop sewing to answer that question. But what is the, yep, electric quilt, the ding, woo. Good job, darling. All right, now, this is a type of stabilizing fabric over a paper template. It's often used for pieced patterns that would otherwise require set-in patches. Oh, no, Diana. <laughs> so what kind of technique of stabilizing fabric over a paper template, like people use it for hexagons, um... Well, okay, um, I'll give you, it's, it, you're kind of right, but maybe I'm not reading it exactly right. Um, EPP, that is, what, what do those initials stand for? Diane 57 got, and Diana Wright got most of it. What is EPP? Yes, good job. Mariella Barnes, EQ8 is, it stands for electric quilt, and they have been doing them. My, the first one I bought was electric quilt five, and then I've gone to six and I don't know if I did seven I think I went then straight to eight but it's an electronic program that makes it um, easier to design quilts and what's so wonderful about it is it will give you it'll print out templates it'll tell you how much fabric you need all of that so um, makes it pretty easy I would say okay Good guess, Diane57. All right. Now, what am I? I'm a half a yard of fabric. Ah, uh, yep, they're fun to play with, huh? I am a half a yard of fabric that has been cut in half again vertically so that it's, it's easier to cut bigger things out of me. What am I? 
by cutting it this way, I'm not so long and skinny. Yes, it's a it's a program you buy, and it's probably about a hundred and eighty dollars somewhere. Um, but yes, fat quarter, Diana Wright, Diana fifty seven, y'all are fast. Yeah, and I don't know if you can find any of the electric quilt. I what I did is I bought my first one, and then I got a discount each time as I upgraded. But I think the one I've got will be my last one, especially since I now do mostly art quilting. Okay, are you ready? I got another good one. You ready? You do need one, Diana Wright. Okay. These are metal teeth in a sewing machine that help pull the fabric through the machine. What am I? Okay, sweetheart. Take care, hon. I hate hot flashes. Feed dogs, yay, good job, good job. Okay, that what am I? I'm a technique. In fact, you've been watching me do this with these pieces that I finished sewing. What am I? You take your fabric that you've just sewn, and you it's a technique of getting it to lay flat until you have time to go to the ironing board. No, running actually makes hot flashes worse. <laughs> So what is the technique? I'll show you right now. Oh, Nadine got it. Um, finger pressing. And I use this a lot until I can get to the iron. And it's just kind of encouraging. Letting that fabric know what you want it to do. <laughs> and then if it doesn't do it, you smack it. <laughs> Actually... I heard somebody one time talk about if you have a, like, especially in the center where you get a big, heavy seam, if it won't lay flat enough, you put a cloth over it and get a little hammer and hammer it. Honest to God, I heard somebody say, suggest that. So, I, and you know what? Honestly, I could see me probably doing it. Oh, gosh. So cute. Okay, now, the next one. All right, this is what they call the final, oops, wait a minute, the, the final measurement of a block, of a completed block that doesn't have, that you don't in, uh, take into account the seam seam allowances. The final sewn measurement of a block when you don't take into account the seam allowances. It's called the what of a quilt. Gotta mush it, exactly. Yep, the, well actually, oh, almost it's it's called the finished size but you are you are very close miss nadine sweetie and you know it's so hard for me to understand try even i've been quilting for years and it's hard for me to remember finished or unfinished or which one's which and it makes me crazy all right it's a type of loosely woven fabric usually made from cotton or wool and it's really soft and warm and makes great rag quilts because it ravels easily what kind of fabric am i
um, it, it's when it's it usually refers to blocks most of the time that I hear finished size is when you're bringing blocks to a raffle to to exchange or somebody wins them all and that's the size it actually is a half inch bigger because if it's 12 inches it's really a 12 and a half but they know that by the time you sew it in it'll be 12. Does that make sense? Not, not denim and not felt. You're really close. Think of what kind. It's good used in rag quilts because it will ravel. You know, rag quilts where you cut the edges and let it get all fluffy. It makes a really comfortable quilt in winter. And you cover your design wall with it. That's the best. I just thought of that. That's the best one right there. You cover your design wall with this type of fabric. What am I? Not chenille. It's close. You make it when you cut it in a rag quilt, it makes chenille when it fluffs. But what type of fabric? Flannel. You got it. Flannel. Good job. And you know what? Maybe in, in where Nadine is, they call it chenille. I don't know. Okay. I'm a type of block. Okay. I'm a, a common unit of patchwork. A common small block. Made by putting two triangles on each side of another triangle or, like I do, putting two triangles or putting two squares on each side of a rectangle. What kind of block am I? Yes, Nadine, flying geese. Woohoo! Oh, okay, it's flannel in both languages. Okay, good. And that was flying geese. I can't imagine back when they used to make a flying geese with just triangles because you've got to bias edges. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. The technique, somebody has said this word in here earlier. The technique of using a muslin pattern or, or just muslin fabric or a numbered paper as the basis for assembling a quilt block. And this ensures accurate and stable blocks. What am I? What is this method of using muslin or numbered paper? And you sew your pieces on that, usually in geometric shapes. And, it, yep, foundation piecing. Good job. All right. What is a block called? That has four pieces only to it. Four pieces and, yep, good job, guys. Four pieces and it makes a square. What is this block or pat, or pat, uh, <laughs> what is this block called? Good job. That one was a nice, easy one. Okay. I am sewing. I am sewing. It's the quilt I did in um, Myrtle Beach that at that quilt class that I took. So it's called um, Urban Nine Patch. And it's a lot of curves, Nadine, in there. And they're slow. They're not hard. I can't really say they're hard. They're just slow. But okay. Now you're ready for this one. The process of using this paper that people used to use to wrap meat to store it. And it's got a, a shiny side and a flat side. And when you iron it, it sticks to the fabric so that then you can cut out the design. What am I? What is my, what is this technique called? Yay! Freezer paper. Yay! Good job. I tell you what, Nadine is running around. <laughs> She's doing a great job. I, I love these young ones. I tell you the truth. Okay. Um, okay. It's my favorite form of quilting. 
You can either use it with a domestic or long arm where you don't measure, you don't, <laughs> you're so cute. You don't measure, you don't use rulers, you just wing it. And just winging it means just do it without, you know, a whole lot of rules. What kind of quilting am I? Uh, no, not quite. Um, I guess you put the feed dogs down. You go in different directions. You, you're, you're on the right thing. You're on the right thing. I was going to see if anybody can get the exact. It's, I'll go ahead and give it to you because my favorite and it's called free motion quilting where you don't write the designs. You don't, you know, follow a certain design and you just go and have fun, go back and forth, whatever direction. Yep. Free motion. Good job. Good job. Okay. Um, uh, star pattern that looks like it has four points. A pattern that looks like a four-pointed star. What am I? Almost, not quite. Um, it would be a good star pattern for all of us on here because we like each other. There's my hint. Oh, I'm so sorry, honey. Take good care, Diana. I know what that feels like. That is awful. Hang in there. Go to just relax. Okay, honey. All right, darling. Love you much. -ish. Be careful. Yes, Diane 57 got my hint. A friendship star. Okay. I am an unwoven product that adds a little bit of weight to fabric, stabilizes it, and I can be ironed on. What am I? I'm especially good if you're going to do embroidery or thread painting. You iron me on to the back of the fabric. What am I? You also put it in collars of a shirt. And cuffs. I hate hot flashes more than I can tell anybody. Oh, they're awful. And, you know, I used to give trunk shows. And I would get nervous speaking in public. And I would have one long hot flash. That's, I, you know, I hardly ever have hot flashes on here with y'all because I feel so comfortable. Yes, Diane57, you got it. Nadine got the fusible part and Diane got the interfacing. Between the two of you, you're geniuses. <laughs> that is wonderful. Okay. All right. Um, uh, here's one for Nadine because she said this before she and somebody else said it. To cut a particular piece from a printed fabric, and you maybe you want to put it in the center of a block, and you want this perfect part put in the center. What do you call the... Pr yes! <laughs> I love how she says fuzzy instead of fussy. I love it. I love that, Nadine. Yeah, it's fuss. Oops. She almost got it. Fussy cutting. I love it. Love it. Okay. They do that in I Spy Quilts. Okay. What is it that you call the warp or the weft of fabric? I bet you, um, I bet you it, it probably was, um, it probably was Patricia, Eleanor Burns' sister, that invented that. 
It probably was, because I first heard Eleanor talking about it. Okay, so what is it called? The warp and weft of the, weft of the fabric. I talked about it a minute ago when I was talking about bias. So what is... Oh, hi, Sonia, sweetie. What is it called? What do you refer to it? The length or the width? The warp or the weft? Warp or the weft of fabric? It's called the what? It's a specific word. And Sonia, the mailman picked up your little envelope yesterday, so I hope you get it soon, sweetie. I hope other people that were waiting for the under sea quilt stuff have gotten it. I know that Kathleen um, Ziegler got it. Grain of fabric, straight of grain, exactly. Okay. Now, this is going to be tough. I don't exactly know how to pronounce it, but it is the raw material from which fabrics are processed. Now, think about this. It's what they name fabric that hasn't been processed. It hasn't... Oh, good, Diane57. Yay! It... In fact, Diane 57 might have sent me a picture. Somebody sent me a picture. Maybe it was Kathleen. Um, it has it. This, the, it's fabric before it's been bleached or dyed. What is it called? It's something. I'll give you the second word. Goods. Something. Goods. And it starts with a G. Something. Goods. This is a tough one. We don't refer to it this way much anymore. But it's to just fit it. Yes, Sonia. That's exactly it. Good job. I don't know if it's greech or what. Greech goods. But it's fabric that just been made but hasn't been bleached or dyed. Okay. What am I? I'm a 90 degree triangle that was formed because a square is cut in half one time. I think I think you the E and the I were 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 mixed up, but that's I mean that's pretty darn good. I'd have been hard pressed for getting anywhere that close. Yeah, definitely new vocabulary. Y'all are learning all kinds of stuff. Anybody wants to sell you a bolt of greed goods, don't take it. <laughs> Get them to finish at least bleaching it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Half square triangle. Thank you. Good job. Okay. This is what Jenny Byer, how Jenny Byer finishes her quilt tops. And it's running stitches, small even stitches through three layers of a quilt. What am I? Oh, and guess what, Sonia? Oh, go tinkle. We'll wait for you. Hand quilting. Good, Sonia. Sonia, the other day, Linda Marcinowski came in here. I forgot she's the lady that works at Jenny Byers. And I thought afterwards, I said, oh, I'm so tickled because I went on and on about Jenny Byers. <laughs> but uh, that Linda, she works for Jenny. So isn't, isn't that cute? But, it, you know, it had been a while since I'd seen her in here. I didn't even realize until after I was all done. I went, oh, that's the Linda. <laughs> She's the one that I sent your photo to and all of that. And I'm so tickled. that She got to see your quilt finished. So isn't that neat? Yep. And hand quilting is the answer. Oh, y'all got that one good. 
Okay, we're going to wait just a second for Diane57 to get back. Um, no, because you know what? She didn't even... The only thing that made me wonder is when I was showing her my Judy Niemeyer pattern quilt, and I talked about it was done with all Jenny Byer fabrics, she mentioned the name of the border. <laughs> and I should have realized at that point when she said... Oh, I like the Midnight Garden border. I should have realized, oh, guess what? <laughs> so I hope she'll come back again. She is such a nice, nice lady. She's younger than uh, me. And uh, how lucky to be able to work for Jenny. So how nice. Anyway, but I was glad, you know, and then it was funny because I was thinking about that. Yeah, uh, well, Jenny Byer, a woman who works for Jenny Byer, got to see Sonia's quilt. So I'm so excited. But um, because you know we we had sent her, I had sent her pictures when you were working on it. So it was nice for her to see it finished. And what was that? It was something else I was just thinking of telling you, but now I forgot. Um, I'm having my private senior moment. So, oh, and it was funny, too, because I bought, I was opening the Jenny Byer package and ooing and aahing over that fabric. And then when I opened the pineapple fabric pa package, I most, um, almost all those pieces were Jenny Byers, too. <laughs> so I think it's clear to her that I truly am a Jenny Byer nerd, you know? <laughs> oh, let me show you what I'm doing right here now. Oh, okay. I am pressing. I've made more than I thought. So I'm pressing out my little, um, and I try to press the seam allowances away from the white because it, I, I, I read telescope the red seam allowance telescope through the white background so anyway but no i love i love that jenny buyer knows that there's a woman named sonia and in south carolina that does beautiful work on her quilts and patterns so and this is what i'm i'm making right now this is the whole and it's a side border for the blocks. So. Before I sew them on. I might starch them. To make sure that they. You know like right now. They're a little wavy there. That happens a lot. When you do. When you do curve piecing. That can happen. These are pretty flat though. I've been relaxed. Okay. Diane 57 is back. All right, let's see. We're going through this. All right, what am I? I am a piece of fabric that is sewn on the back of a finished quilt to allow it to be hung at a quilt show. What am I? Oh, starch is wonderful. My best friend. And I just buy the Niagara, whatever, at Walmart. I, I can't afford best press. That's, that's for fancy people. <laughs> a sleeve, yes. A hanging sleeve. Very, very good. Okay. All right. Way to go, Mariella, Nadine, Diane57, Sonia Johnson. Way to go. Okay. I'm a type of quilting named for one of the 50 states uh, in the United States. And I am a type of reverse applique. Kind of like how a snowflake, paper snowflake is cut and then basted onto a background of fabric. And it's usually two solid colors of fabric. This is a tricky one, ladies. Let's see who gets this one. 
type of applique quilting named for one of the 50 states and the United States. And because they, they, they had this form of quilting in that state. And it's kind of a reverse applique. Oh, Nadine got it. Hawaiian quilting. Woohoo! Okay. Oh, and I don't have one of these handy. I'm a type of tool from Japan that is made of either wood or plastic. Good guessing, Diane57. Made of either wood or plastic. And it allows you to put a crease in the fabric, marking it. Yes, very good. Very, very good, Mariella. You ladies are sharp. Okay. The, I'm a type of stitch. Now, I hope you know some stitches. A decorative needlework stitch with many variations used in embroidery. Um, it's a type of stitch. A decorative stitch. Um, it also can be a type of way of laying bricks out in a pattern or wood in a pattern. And it also refers to a type of weave of fabric. So as if, as in a man can have a suit made, a suit made of this woven wool. Okay. Herringbone, son, you got it. Woohoo! Yeah, and it's you know what? It looks like a chevron, Mariella. Woohoo! Okay, I'm a type of fabric that people often on the prairie had to make for themselves. So I'm kind of a loose weave, often in a plaid, and I have a relaxed, comfortable, homemade look. What am I? A type of fabric made by people on their own or in the prairie. No, good guess. But they, let's put it this way. They had to make their own threads and then to do the weaving. So what would that be called? It's, it's not as refined. No, good guessing, but not that. If you made, I'll give you a hint. If you made it for yourself, you probably made it at no, good guessing. But pe think of people on the prairie making this for themselves in their wooden prairie houses and then making shirts out of it. And they often were plaid looking. I'm going to get you an example and show you. I'll be right back. Here are my examples. I've had this for years. And see how it's a big, it's kind of rough, coarse weave. Okay, think about again. I said if you had to make it yourself, you probably made it where? From your, where would you make this? It's like if you make your own dresses, they call it what? If you make your own dresses, you went to school and said this is, well, this is a good teaching moment. Now, what this is, is homespun. So do you see how the weave is real big and coarse? Because they would have been spinning their own thread and then doing their own weaving. So it's called homespun. You, have you heard of homespun now? And I've had these, somebody gave these to me years ago. And I've had them just waiting, not knowing what I was going to do with them. 
but it's called homespun. So now y'all just learn something. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Yep, that's what they mean when it's homespun. So it's not as fancy and nice as you'd get from a fabric store. But, hey, it's fabric you could make for yourself. Okay. Now, a special sewing machine foot that you use when you want to be able to see what you're stitching especially if you have an intricate design, and I use one for my quilting. What kind of sewing machine foot is that? It's usually round, and you can it's either clear or a, or a loop of metal, so you can see what you're sewing. What kind of foot am I? Yeah, open toe, I'll take that. What's another... What does this foot do when you put it on the machine and you sew? There's something it does that makes it easier to travel over the fabric. Do y'all remember what that is? Yes, very good. It's a hopping foot. Way to go, Sonia. Woohoo! Open toed hopping foot. Yep. Okay. Oh. Uh, all right, I'll try to do this one. It might be tricky. I'm a beginner patchwork quilt pattern using a quarter square triangle to make blocks that mimic this item, which is in the, na the name of the quilt. It's quarter square triangles, and when you set them upright, they mimic an old-fashioned timepiece and that's the name of the block or the quilt that's tricky when I don't know if I'm saying it clearly enough anybody got an answer for that one Name of a quilt block that has, yes, very, very good. Um, Sonia got it. It's an hourglass design. And I don't blame you, Nadine, for not quite getting that one because I couldn't. It was so hard to explain it. In the directions, they have the name of the quilt. They have the name of the quilt in the directions, which I can't do that because then you'd know. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a tricky one. I'm not sure if y'all have heard of this before. I, I had heard the title, but not fully understood. It's a, a name for fabric that has been tie-dyed in the yarns prior to weaving and it starts with an i i had never known what this was i had heard the term somewhere but didn't really know what it was so the yarn is tie dyed which means all variegated and then the fabric is woven from those tie dyed yarns does anybody have a clue what that could be That's a pretty good guess. It's not the word that they uh, that they have, but that was a good guess, Nadine. Starts with an I. Anybody? No. I'm going to type it, too, because it's such an odd word. But now, that's even something that I'm learning. I didn't know about that. Okay. Here is the word. I know. It's like, what in the world? It is this. See? <laughs> it's like, okay, I just learned something too. All right. Okay. Now this one, good guess, good guess. I said it started with an I, good guess. All right. This one might be a little bit tricky, 
but just kind of let your mind go and see what you can get. It's a term for an art quilt, and I guess it's ICAT. Um, but anyway, this, this new clue is a term for an art quilt made in a creative, free spirit manner without worrying about the rules of quilting. Pieces are usually cut all freehand like this. You've seen probably on the quilt show or something like that, people making this kind of quilt. What do they call it? This word also begins with an I. Kind of think about a comedian getting on stage and just you throw him a word and he makes a joke about it. Yeah, I think it might be Gene Wells that does that kind of stuff. It starts with an I, and it's also what a comedian does when he gets on the stage and just, yes, yes, improvisational quilt. All right. I didn't think y'all would get that one. I thought, oh, this is a tricky one. Okay. Now, the next one is a type of quilt stitching that you do. And you try to do it right in the little, the line of the seam allowance so that you get quilting, but it's not so noticeable. You try to hide those stitches down in that line of the seam allowance. So what is that called? Yep, in the ditch. Stitch in the ditch. Great. All right. Another eye clue. It's named for a country, and it's a pattern of using little squares, and they, they're placed diagonally, so they kind of make their own secondary um, quilt pattern. And they all run in a line on a diagonal, and they go from one block to the other block to the other block. What kind of quilt pattern am I? And it's named for another country. Irish chain. Good job, Diane 57. Okay. All right. Now, this one's going to be tricky, okay? A trip around the world is, is a version of that. Okay. A triangle with two equal sides, but the sum is longer than the base. And it's an I word. If y'all get it, I'm going to pass out on the floor. I wouldn't get it if it were me. It's the name of a triangle whose two sides are longer than the base. Two equal sides, but the, the, the two sides added together. Oh my God, so Look at these ladies getting it. Okay, I'm passing out. Whoop. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> that was a good job. Oh, my gosh. I'd have never gotten that one. <laughs> okay. A type of quilt. Think of our friend Akko. A type of quilt using a certain country's fabrics, such as indigo and kasuri, fabric motifs and stitches that work together that create a magic look. Oh, that's okay. I figure some of y'all are probably doing it on a phone or having to type so fast. I don't care about spelling. I know what you mean. Okay. So think of Akko. What kind of quilting is a type of quilting using a country's fabrics such as kasuri and indigo Motifs and stuff work together to make a dramatic look. Does anybody know Akko? Not quite, Diane 57. I'm a little farther away than that. In fact, I'll give you this clue. In the international quilt shows, the ladies from this country wow everybody. I mean, I don't know if I've seen is yes, Sonia. Very good. Japan. Those ladies are amazing quilters. Gosh, yes. So good job. Good job, Sonia. All right. Jelly roll. I just gave you the answer. 
What is a jelly roll? <laughs> this time I'll have to do it opposite. You tell me what a jelly roll is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I did it. I gave you all the answer. So now you tell me what it is. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for saving me. Okay. Um, okay. Somebody said this word earlier. It's a quilt block pattern in which the fabric is pieced in a way that it resembles different images as seen through this special toy or tool that you cut like maybe eight of the same type, same design fabric, and you put them together, and they form a circle. Can anybody tell me what that is? Somebody mentioned this word. Yes, kaleidoscope. Woohoo! All right, now here we go. Here we go. I'm a traditional ceremonial fabric, hand-woven on wooden looms that came from Ghana, West Africa. Many printed versions of this on cotton now exist and are popular with quilters. Yeah, Stack and White, you got it, Diane57. So what kind of cloth, a ceremonial fabric, hand-woven on wooden looms in Ghana, West Africa, do you remember? Bonnie came and had to go. She's working from home and had to get some letters done. But what is that fabric that fabric that comes from Ghana, West Africa? I'll give you a hit. It starts with a K. Yes, she would know. She gave us some to give out. Starts with a K. Ghana, West Africa. Yep. Starts with a K. And if you are done guessing, I'll tell you. I love it because they call it mud cloth too. Almost. Good guess. It's kente cloth. And it's spelled K-E-N-T-E. -E. Kente cloth. From Ghana, West Africa. Okay. When you want, what a, mm, oh, this is going to be a tricky one to try to get you to do. You're sewing and you need to stop and you want, you don't want your sewing to come loose or you're quilting and you don't want your thread to come loose. What is the term I'm looking for? has a special name and everybody says oh here is how you make this not quite a back stitch it's it's what you do to the thread but there's a special name that it's called what do you do to that thread to make sure the thread doesn't pull through And I, I'm, I got to apologize, too. It was hard for me to try to explain it. But the word quilter is in it. Quilt, yeah. But Because you, you know how every time when you learn to quilt, they always first show you how to make that knot. So it's quilter's knot. Good job. Good job. Okay. Now, now this is a tricky one. Because I haven't even heard heard of this myself. If you hear this one, I might have to actually fall on the floor when I pass out. <laughs> okay. It's a type of hand-woven fabric by a certain tribe of people in the Congo using leaves from raffia trees. And this kind of cloth can include embroidery, patchwork, or other embellishments. Starts with a K. 
And I don't expect you'll have ever heard of this. I didn't hear from it. Uh, I have never heard of it. And it's made from raffia trees, people of the Congo. It's amazing how creative people can be. My goodness gracious. I think I can hear your brain spinning. So I'll give you the answer because I had no clue. Oh, Sonia got it. Cuba. Yes. Cuba cloth. Isn't that amazing? From a raffia tree. I got to tell you, Mark and I were finishing watching a show from public television. And it's this, um, it's this explorer. And he was in the caves off of Bor and Bor cutting down all of the uh, rainforest and Borneo has been denuded so badly and they said if they keep cutting the trees down it's going to turn into a desert so we've got about 15 more minutes here but anyway um they went into the cave and they found cave art and it's are you ready for this 40,000 years old cave art and they also found something that they found nowhere else in the world you know how that people did what they call negative handprints where they put their hand on the stone and then spit the dye around their hand and that's called a negative because you know you only see the hand because what shows up around it well, when they went farther back in the cave, they discovered something that hadn't been discovered before. 40,000-year-old positive handprints. In this case, they made the dye, put it on their hand, and then pressed their hand to the rock. 40,000 years ago. And what really touched me about that was somebody way back when wanted somebody to know that they had been there. Isn't that nice? Take care, Nadine. You were a lot of fun and a smart girl. Boy, we're going to have to watch out for our Nadine. She's a smart one. Take good care. Have a good sleep, sweetie pie. I think you won the game today, darling. Pages, because I still have more pages to go. So I tell you what we'll do. Next week, don't forget, I will get you, it's tilted, I will, next week, I will get you um, instructions to make your own bingo card, and it's real easy, I will give you a, 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 a bunch of words, and you pick which words you want where, and well, actually, they'll be in columns. Like these words go under Q and these words go under U. And you'll make your own bingo card. And then I'll have the bingo chips and all that. And what you use, you, when you cover your bingo cards, you can cover them with M&Ms. You can cover them with buttons. And, and we'll play bingo and finish up today's quilt definitions because I think that'll be fun so yeah I probably should get ready to go but you've been a lot of fun game day in fact we're supposed to vote because I want to give somebody a prize I don't know what I did with the list of names that you gave me to call this show and so if you think of any new ones send them to me at our time to quilt at twc.com and let's draw for sure, because I want to send somebody a gift certificate, okay? So, y'all are the best. Y'all are the best. I know, I Diane 57, I love those shows. It was, it was amazing to think about. So, have a good, I'll see some of you on Thursday night for our undersea adventure. And then I'll see the rest of you Sunday for our live stream. And next week, we'll do the rest of these quiz questions and Quilter's Bingo. So, be 
Uh, I'll send the information to our site. If you don't belong to our site, then just send me an email at OurTimeToQuiltTWC.com, and I'll make sure you get a copy of a bingo card. Okay? All right, guys. Y'all are the best. Have a good next couple of days. Take good care of yourself. Take a nap. Eat well. And just hunker down. We can do this. We can do this. It is so fun to spend time with you. Thank you for making my day. Thank you. Bye-bye, girls. Love y'all to bits. Take good care and have a good week. Bye-bye, darlings. Mwah. <laughs>